Hey YouTube, it's Emmanuel from Tech Insomnia and today I'm going to be reviewing the 2022 Lenovo IdeaPad V14 Gen 3. This one's rocking the 12th gen Intel i5 CPU. I'm going to be putting this computer to the test. I'm going to test everything on this computer and give you real world examples of what to expect if you're considering purchasing this computer. As always, hope you find value. Hit that like and subscribe button and let's jump right in. First thing we're going to take a look at is some specs on this computer. So we're rocking the 12th gen Intel i5. We've got 10 cores with 12 logical cores, 8 gigs of RAM on this computer. Now the SSD is a full NVMe SSD, 256 gigabyte. This one has 83 hours on it. The read write speed of the NVMe SSD is 1790 read with 1152 write. And we've got a Wi-Fi 6 adapter. We're only getting 287 megabits per second for the Wi-Fi speed, but that could be varying factors. For anyone wondering, the Intel integrated internal graphics card on this computer can utilize up to four gigs of RAM, and that's shared with the system's total memory available. So on this specific computer, out of the eight gigs of RAM currently installed, the graphics card can utilize up to four gigs of RAM. First thing we'll test on this computer is boot time from power button to ready desktop. Now we're running Windows 11 Pro, so let's see how quick this computer can boot. 11 seconds, blazing fast. Now let's test how quick this computer can sleep and wake up from sleep. So as soon as this light gets blinky, we know it's asleep. So it's asleep. Let's see how quick it can wake. Pretty fast. I mean, it went to sleep quick, it woke up quick, pretty quick. Now we're gonna do a screen side angle test. So I'm just gonna put the computer to full brightness. Let's see. Uh, let's say right about there, still visible. So I mean, can't see it on the extreme angle, but still very bright, vibrant screen when you're head on. Now let's open up a few apps to test the speed on this computer. Let's start off with Microsoft Word. That was quick. Let's try Excel. Whew. Very fast on this 12th gen i5. Let's try Acrobat. Flies open. Let's try something a little bigger. Let's try FL Studio. That opened very, very fast. I mean, things are flying open on this computer. Let's go for PowerPoint. Fast. Now we'll open up Google Chrome. Test the internet speed. Just do some random searches. Let's go cooking. Houses, technology, wow, let's open up a site, let's go Canada, computers.com, pretty quick, scroll down, open something random, I mean the Wi-Fi 6 on this computer definitely makes the internet very fast. So I've got YouTube open now, and I'm just gonna play one of my videos to see how the graphics card does. Let's boost the quality up to 1080. Let's minimize and maximize from full screen to regular. This is a great way to test the internal graphics card of any computer, stream 1080 or 4K. And just look for hesitation, look for lag, look for anything while the computer is minimizing and maximizing. Man, this is pretty fluid. This computer's definitely got a great graphics card, and I'm sure that 12th Gen i5 is helping a lot with this. Just to get a better idea, let's go back and open a couple other videos, see how quick they load in 1080. Minimize, maximize. I mean, it's pretty smooth. Let's try one more. Loaded quick, playing very smoothly. I mean, I'm just minimizing and maximizing. This thing is not even breaking a sweat. Let's take it up to 4K on this video.
minimize, maximize. Yeah, it's still playing very smoothly. Can't see any video stutter. Nothing. See how the CPU is doing? Oh, it spiked a little bit. Definitely spiked up to 100, I can see here on the top four cores. But I mean, doesn't look like it bottlenecked. GPU is at 20%, steady streaming. Now let's test out the sound on this computer. We're at 60%, I believe. Let's boost it up to 100. Wow. That's pretty loud for a laptop. Very clear highs and mids. I'm really impressed. That sounds amazing for a laptop. Very good sound on this computer. We'll test out a few more just for redundancy. It's full volume. Can't get over the sound on this computer. It's really, really good. So I wanted to try something a little bit different. I've got four Google Chrome windows open, all streaming four different videos at max resolution. And I just wanted to see how the GPU and CPU would fare under these conditions. And I mean, it's handling it like a pro. The GPU is at 50% utilization. The CPU is fluctuating. I mean, we can see here on this graph, it seems like the top four cores are doing most of the lifting in all performance related tests. Our memory is okay. I mean, four videos at max resolution in four different windows. This computer is handling this like a pro. Very impressive. Now in regards to the keyboard, I gotta say that the typing on this computer is very, very good. Very easy to push the keys, very easy to type. Not making any sense there. <laughs> but just an all around great keyboard, no backlit keyboard. The uh, top options are basically enabled by default. So the controls here for increasing, decreasing the brightness, airplane mode, airplane mode off, the different keys, and then you can push FN to get to the F1, F2, F3. So I mean, that's a nice feature, which I'm sure can be adjusted in the BIOS. But other than that, the spacing of the keyboard, the keys are really easy to push, really easy to type with this computer. In regards to the trackpad, we're in the same realm when it comes to usability and functionality. Great trackpad, two finger gesture works well, very responsive, easy to use. You can uh, either tap to close, which works, or you can push into the trackpad if you like that click feel of the trackpad. But other than that, very easy to use, very quick, very responsive, very comfortable trackpad. Now in regards to ports on this computer, they do give you a 3.5 millimeter aux jack, so you can plug your older headphones or your phone if it supports that into this port. They give you a Type-C port, which is utilized for charging as well as Type-C data transfer. So the charger that came with this computer is a Type-C charger, so if the computer is charging, you will lose the functionality of the Type-C port unless you have a DC jack charger, which they also include. So you can charge this computer via Type-C 
or DC jack. This computer came with the Type C. So I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but something to keep in mind if you really do use the Type C a lot, you'll want to get the DC jack charger as opposed to the Type C charger. HDMI, USB port, and then on the other side of the computer, we've got a USB port with the ethernet port, which is great to have if you want to go hardwired. Another great thing I want to mention is the weight and portability of this computer. It's very, very light, very easy to transport, very compact. Now, another thing we'll test on this computer is the webcam quality, which is actually pretty good. It's pretty clear. Now this won't do 1080p, but we can go up to 720, which I think is still reasonably good quality for what it is. I mean, you guys can see me clearly. <laughs> Hit that like and subscribe button, man. So all in all, is this Lenovo IdeaPad V14 G3 12th Gen i5 a good computer and worth considering? Definitely, it's fast on the internet. Wi-Fi is strong, the video card is strong, display is great, it's light, it's portable. The battery is excellent, I forgot to touch on that, but the battery is absolutely incredible. I'm getting some really good battery life on this computer. Definitely something to consider, and I feel like for the price point, in terms of consumer grade computers, this is definitely, I mean, Lenovo IdeaPads are always at the top, in my opinion, of the consumer grade chain. Hope you guys found value. Hit that like and subscribe button again and stay tuned for more to come in the future. Appreciate all the support. Stay safe out there, guys.